Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking about five SAT math questions that you must solve using Desmos. So this will save you a lot of time, it's very efficient, and it's going to get you uh, more points because you're not going to be making silly mistakes. So the first question type is systems of two linear equations uh, in two variables. So the thing with this is I've picked out a very easy example that you probably should do by hand because it's pretty straightforward. But for those more complex examples, right, you're going to be wanting, wanting to use Desmos because you might make a mistake when you have more variables, three variables even. So this says the system of equations above has a solution, x, y, okay. What is the solution of x? So all you have to do is just find the intersection between these two lines by just plugging in the equations, right? We just plugged in the equations right into Desmos. You can see over here, it shows you the intersection, 6, 8. And so corresponding x, y, so x would be 6. Now here's a small caveat actually is in order to see the intersection, you actually have to click on both lines, right? So you have to click on the blue line and then the red line, and it'll show you where they intersect. Otherwise, if you just hover over it, sometimes it doesn't show the intersection. So that's just some weird bug that Desmos has. But moving on to the second type of problem, that's going to be linear inequalities in either one or two variables. And this can be just straight up the inequality or it could be a word problem. So you can see here we have a word problem. So basically we have a helicopter and delivers both 100 pound packages or 120 pound packages. We have to have at least 10 packages and the total weight can be at most 100, uh, 1,100 pounds. And it wants to know the maximum number of 120 pound packages that a helicopter can carry. So first off, the first step here is actually you have to translate the words into variables, right? So here what I did is I just called X the 100 pound package and Y the 120 pound package. And so I've just set the corresponding values, right? So 1,100, that's the total weight. And so since X, I call the 100 pound package, I just put a variable of 100 next to it because if I had one 100 pound package, I have a total weight of 100, right? So since I have these two inequalities now, what Desmos is going to do is graph it, right? And that's going to graph and also shade in all the solutions to that set equation. And so these two equations are then going to intersect and also have a mutual shared shaded area, as you can see down here. So this mutual shaded area is all the possible combinations that satisfy both of these constraints, right? Um, at least 10 packages and also under 1,100 total pounds. And so if we want to find the maximum number of 120 pound packages, we want to look for the maximum Y value at any of the intersections or shaded mutual areas. So you can see here at the top, the apex of the shaded area, we have intersection of five, five. And so we know that the maximum Y value for a solution here is going to be five. And therefore we can pick choice C as our answer for that problem. Moving on, we have two variable systems. This one, it says if X, Y is a solution to the system above, which of the following could be the value of X? I mean, very straightforward. Just plug this in to Desmos. It'll give you the intersections here. You can see here, we can see negative one zero is going to be the X, Y coordinate. And so the value of X is going to be negative one A. The next question type is going to be equivalent expressions with constants. Now, this is probably another bad example because here it's much more efficient if you just find a value of A that you can multiply by 4 to give you 0 0.36, right? If you notice that pattern straight away, this is a straightforward problem. But there are problems where you're given constants and you have equivalent expressions and that might deal with some other weird rule like radicals and rationals that you might not be sure about and you want to verify, well, you can easily do that using sliders. So they give you a value of A, but you can change A based on a slider. So all I did is I just draft both equations, right? And it gave me both equations, except the green line actually didn't show up because A is invalid because we don't have a value for A. And what I did is I just set up a slider for A and I dragged it until the two lines matched up because we want a uh, equivalent expression, right? Because these two can be rewritten as that one. And so a value of A would make these two equations equivalent or otherwise the same line. And so a value of 0 0.09 for A gave me the same line. And so I knew that was the answer. Final question here is just going to be linear equations where you want to find the slope line when given coordinates. So it says here in the XY plane, line K intersects the Y axis at the point zero negative six and passes through the point two two. If the point 20 comma W lies on the line K, 
was the value of w. So here you could obviously just calculate the slope manually and then set up the equation and then plug in 20 for x, but that's too much work for us, all right? We want to plug this into Desmos, get it done, 15 seconds, boom, boom, boom. So what we did here is we just set up a table, right? We set up a table right here, zero, and we just plugged in all the coordinates. And then what you're going to do is set up what is called a regression, right? Desmos has a regression function, so we can type in y1. Uh, you have this little weird symbol here that indicates a regression mx1 plus b. So this is a standard form for a linear equation. Now, if you were dealing with a quadratic, then you would just modify it, right? Instead of y1, that weird symbol, mx1 plus b, you would be ax squared uh, plus bx plus c, right? So really easy to replicate here. And so what this does is after putting the parameters in, it tells you the value of y. It tells us the slope. And it also tells us the constant b right here. And so, I mean, you could take that and just find the answer. Or because it plugs the line literally on the right side, we just set a slider for x equals 20 to find where they intersect. And you can see here, when x is 20, y is 74. So if the point 20 comma w lies on line k, which is the black one, then the value of w right here would be 74. So yeah, that does it for the video, guys. If you want to practice more SAT math questions, make sure you check out our playlist right here. And thank you guys for watching.